Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. Hi there. In this video, I want to show you how to pull up a report called Expenses by Vendor Summary. I use this report when I'm trying to identify who I might need to look into to see who might be eligible for a 1099. So let me walk you through it. On the left hand side of my screen, I'm going to go to reports and then reports. In the upper right hand corner, um, you can see I search for this a lot. I'm going to search for expenses by vendor summary. If it doesn't show up for you at the top of your list, just start typing and it will show up. Um, right now it says, here's your expenses by vendor summary. January through December. And I'm like, that's fantastic. I know that I issue a 1099 in most cases to people who, people or companies who received more than $600. As much as I like the idea of going through this and hoping that I don't miss anything, what I like more is sorting my list. I'm going to click sort in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to sort it in descending order. Now I have my list in descending order. In real life, what I'll do is I'll grab this list, I'll print it out, I will draw a divider line. I will draw a line that separates the vendors who received more than $600 from the vendors that received less than $600. This isn't going to tell me who definitely needs to get a Form 1099. What this is going to tell me is who I need to look into to identify if they're going to get a form. So once I have this list, I might go over to the right click on the number and just say, what did I buy from that place? And then I'm like, oh, I bought materials or, oh, I bought hotel stay, like whatever the case is. This is not foolproof. This is just a method to help you figure out who you should be looking for. What I like about it is that I'm, I'm worried about missing things. And I'm like, if I just grab my vendors and I just take 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and look at each of the vendors that got enough money and like really dive into why I gave them money, cross-reference that with the 1099 instructions, I can figure out like who I might need to make a 1099 for. And if, if I've already got QuickBooks set up to do this for me, that's fantastic. This is just me giving myself peace of mind to be like, okay, yep, 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 I got all my things. If you, like me, have not specified that means you have payments that you issued that you did not pick a vendor in the drop down list. Let's take a look and see which ones I've missed. I'm just going to click on the number. I have some journal entries. I don't care about my journal entries. Um, it's from a different video, but oftentimes your payroll software will sync over to your QuickBooks. And you know that the people on payroll, they're getting a W-2, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, if you have journal entries and they don't say stuff about payroll, use logic and figure out what's going on there. Um, deposit bank fee. This just means that there was a $25 fee taken off of some deposit. There's some interest paid. It's $500. Probably should put a vendor for this one. Uh, let's click on here. Um, so the name is PayPal. And if I put PayPal here and then save and close, I can see that it disappears from this list. This is my sample file, but it, it's, it's not going to be the first time that you see me make a mistake and I'm like, oh, I should fix that so my demo is better. But also it's going to happen to you. There is likely to be maybe just one thing where you're like, oh, oops, I forgot to put a name and you go into the name and it updates your list. If I go back to transaction report, I can see PayPal. I can see the 500. If I click on it, I've got the $500 plus some other stuff. Life is good. So this video isn't intended to show you how to file your 1099s or even how to isolate past this point. This is just, here's another way to look at your reports so you can figure out who might be eligible so you know who to deep dive on in research. Because my hope is that it feels less overwhelming. Like if you look at this, if this was your real QuickBooks, I only have, what is it, one, two, three, four, five. I have five things where more than $600 was issued. 
it's not going to take me very long to double check and, and make sure if any of those five are eligible for a 1099. So this is my super secret way of having peace of mind when I process this for myself or my clients. Thank you so much for watching. If you get stuck and need help, please don't hesitate to reach out to your tax preparer, your bookkeeper, or us. These are due at the end of January. I highly recommend if you get stuck and you need help, you reach out in the early part of January. As we get closer and closer to the end of January, we have less and less time to help people work on this stuff. Thank you so much and have a great day.